the arithmetic of equations. A balanced chemical reaction is going to tell you the amount of reactants to mix and the amount of products to expect. And we're going to do some calculations of quantities and chemical reactions. This is called stoichiometry. When you look at a balanced chemical equation, it can be interpreted in terms of atoms, molecules, moles, mass, or volume. We're going to look at this example equation here the decomposition of potassium chlorate into potassium chloride plus oxygen. Notice it is balanced. We have to have all these equations balanced before we interpret them. First of all, number of atoms. A balanced chemical equation will indicate the number and type of each atom that makes up each reactant and that also makes up each product. Now the number and types of atoms are not changed in a reaction. All we're doing is simply rearranging those atoms to form different products. So when we look at this example equation here, we have, we're starting with 2KClO3. So we have two atoms of potassium. We have two atoms of Cl. And we have six atoms of oxygen on the left side of the equation. On the product side, we're going to have two atoms of potassium, two atoms of chloride and six atoms of oxygen. So in every chemical reaction, the atoms are conserved. They're the same on both sides of the equation. We are simply rearranging them to form different products. Number of molecules, when you look at a balanced chemical reaction, it tells us the number of molecules. We're starting with two molecules of KClO3. We're forming two molecules of KCl and three molecules of oxygen. So to get the molecules we simply look at the coefficients from the balanced chemical equation. Moles. When we look at a balanced chemical equation we get the number of moles. Just like molecules we look at the coefficients. So we're starting with two moles of KClO3. We're ending up with two moles of KCl and three moles of oxygen. This is the most important thing that we can glean from a chemical reaction and that is the number of moles. You notice the moles are not conserved in this case. We start with two moles. We end up with a total of five moles. So the moles are not conserved in every single chemical reaction. Mass. A balanced chemical equation obeys the law of conservation of mass. We cannot create or destroy mass in a chemical reaction. Since the number of atoms doesn't change during the course of a chemical reaction, the total mass is not going to change either. So the mass of two moles of the KClO3 is going to equal the mass of two moles KCl plus three moles of oxygen. And I will go through some numbers in just a minute, but the mass cannot change because in the course of a chemical reaction, the atoms do not change. And then finally, we can look at volume. Assuming standard temperature and pressure, the equation tells you the volume of gases. And at standard temperature and pressure, one mole of any gas occupies 22.4 liters. So go back to this equation again. We start off with a solid. Solids, solids essentially take up no volume. So essentially, we're starting with zero liters on the left side. On the right side, KCl is a solid as well, so that essentially takes up no volume. But oxygen is a gas. And we have three moles of oxygen, so that's three times 22.4 liters. So we started off with zero liters, essentially, because it was a solid. We ended up with a gas which takes up a lot of space because the molecules expand to fill their container. And so we ended up with three times 22.4 liters. We ended up with quite a large volume because gases take up a lot of space. So in summary, mass and atoms are conserved in every chemical reaction. Molecules, moles, and volumes are not necessarily conserved. However, they can be. So let's briefly look at just a few more examples here. First of all, make sure the equation is balanced. H2 plus Cl2 forms 2HCl. We have one mole of H2 plus one mole Cl2. We end up with two moles 
of HCl. Now here is a case where the moles were actually conserved. We started off with two moles, we ended up with two moles, and molecules would be the same thing. Liters would also be conserved because they're all gases. So this is an example, it's not, it doesn't happen very often, but this is an example where everything is conserved, they're the same on both sides of the equation. Okay, H2 plus O2 forms H2O. Make sure it is balanced. It is not to start. We need to add those coefficients there in order to balance that. Now the most important thing we're going to get out of these balanced chemical equations is moles. So we're essentially taking two moles of H2. We're adding one mole of oxygen. And we're forming two moles of water. If we look at this in terms of mass, to see how mass is always conserved, we have the mass of hydrogen. So we have two moles of hydrogen. The mass of hydrogen, it's H2, so that's two grams per mole. We're going to add to that one mole of oxygen. One mole of oxygen is 32 grams per mole because it's O2. And then we're going to form two moles of water. Water's got a mass of 18 grams per mole. And so if we add these numbers up, we'll see how mass is conserved. Two times two is four, plus 32. So we got 36 grams on the left side. And on the right side, two times 18 gives you 36 grams. So in every chemical reaction, mass is conserved. One more example. First of all, make sure the equation is balanced, and it is not balanced. The only way to balance this equation, we're going to have to put a 2 out here. That will give me 4 carbon, so I'm going to need a 4 there. It's going to give me 4 hydrogen as well, so I'm going to need a 2 there. Now the reason I start off with a 2 in front of C2H2 is to get an even number of oxygen over here. That's going to give me an even number of oxygen. And in front of O2, I need a 5. So I'm starting off with 2 moles of the C2H2. I'm adding 5 moles of oxygen. I am forming 4 moles carbon dioxide plus 2 moles of water. And if we're doing mass, just like we did in the previous problem, mass is always conserved. Moles were not. We started with seven moles, we ended up with six moles, but mass is conserved. If you add up the masses of all reactants, you get 212. So the mass of the products will be 212 as well.